Hello, and welcome to Logarithmic Functions and Models. This is the Exponential Growth and Decay portion of the lecture, part two. My name's Tuesday J. Johnson. I'm a lecturer at the University of Texas, El Paso, and an assistant professor at Doniana Community College. Okay, so let's start with some definitions. An exponential decay function has the form a q of t, q for quantity, equals q sub zero e to the negative kt, where q sub zero, it says subscript, this is frequently called the initial value. It represents the value, the quantity, at a time of zero. So q sub zero is the initial quantity, the quantity at time zero. k is the decay constant. And the decay constant and something called the half-life for q are related by the formula k times the half-life is natural log of 2. Always. k times the half-life is natural log of 2. Our second definition, an exponential growth function, has the exact same form. Notice it's still q of t equals q sub 0 e to the, and this time it's a positive kt. Uh, the only difference in the two formulas is negative is decay. A positive exponent will be growth. q sub 0 still represents the value of q at time 0. k is now called the growth constant because it's a growth function, growth constant, decay function, decay constant. The growth constant k and doubling time for q are related by k times doubling time equals natural log of 2. Notice these equations very similar. The only difference is in our terminology. A growth function has a positive exponent, a decay function has negative. If it's decaying, half will be left after a certain amount of time. If it's growing, it'll double over a certain amount of time, but we're always related by this equation. So let's find the associated growth or decay function. When q equals 1,000, uh, excuse me, q equals 1,000 when t equals 0, and I have a half-life of 3. When t equals 0 is always going to give us the initial value, so q sub 0 equals 1,000. That's what that little phrase there says, q sub 0 is 1,000. Half-life equals 3, and usually this will have units to it, but this is just a practice the concept problem. Half-life equals 3 means the time for half the substance to remain is 3. 3 days, 3 hours, 3 minutes, 3 eons, I don't know, whatever it happens to be. In 3 units of time, only half of the substance will remain. We know that k multiplied by the half-life is always natural log of 2, and with this we can find our k value, our decay constant. We know it's decay because of the half-life. So q of t is equal to 1,000, e to the negative, because it's decay, I know it's a negative exponent, and then I'm going to use the exact value, natural log of 2 divided by 3 times t. And I leave this in exact form because rounding could throw off your answer. It depends on how close you want it to be. And also, for those of you that use WebAssign as your uh, homework system, as we do at UTEP, Make sure you use the exact value unless it specifically tells you, hey, round a certain number of decimal places, it wants exactness. You can find this. I didn't need a calculator for any of it. I could type it all in. It's all good to go. Don't even have to reach for my technology. So let's try it again. Q equals 2,000 when T equals 0. My doubling time is 2. As soon as I see the words doubling time, I know I'm looking at a growth equation. Q equals 2,000 when T equals 0 tells me my initial quantity is 2,000. Doubling time tells me TD is 2. The growth constant times doubling time 2 equals natural log of 2, and I could find my growth constant, constant, excuse me, natural log of 2 over 2. Fill in the values. Q of T equals 2,000 E to the natural log of 2 over 2 times T. Be careful with this. I like the way I wrote it on the previous slide better because this gets a little confusing. You have to make sure your t is not in the denominator. Uh, maybe you want to put your t out in front. Maybe you make sure that your t doesn't go inside the logarithm. Be very careful. Using a lot of parentheses is the best way to make sure that the computer or your calculator or whatever it is that you're using knows exactly what you're trying to say. 
All right, so we have these exponential growth and decay functions, and we also have the basics of exponential functions. We looked at exponential functions as f of x equals a times b to the x. So we should be able to convert back and forth. So we're going to convert the given exponential function to the form indicated. And we're going to round to four significant digits. Uh, if you need more information on significant digits, check out my website, uh, math.utep.edu slash faculty slash Tuesday J. If you scroll down the right hand side, there's extra practice. Click on the algebra button and it'll take you to significant digits versus rounding. There's some practice problems there for you also if you need to work on your significant digits. All right, now, if f of x is 4e to the 2x, I want to rewrite it as f of x equals a times b to the x. Well, looking at the two forms, it'll always be that a, the initial amount for exponential functions, is equal to q sub 0, the initial amount for our exponential growth functions, right? This is a growth function because the exponent's positive. Also, the b, the base multiplier in exponential functions, will always be the e to the k portion in the exponential growth or decay. So in this case, we know that a equals 4, and we know that b, our b value, will be e squared. e squared, we can round, excuse me, significant digit to 7.389, and I write exponential form for my given exponential growth formula, 4 times 7.389 to the x power. We should definitely do that again. So convert the given exponential function to the form indicated. This time I have 2.1 times 1.001 to the t. I want to write it in terms of exponential growth rather than just an exponential function. Again, a, the 2.1, is the same as our initial value, so q sub 0 is 2.1. We know that our b value, 1.001, is equal to e to the k. In order to find 1.001 equals e to the k, we take the natural log of both sides or rewrite. All right. k is the power to which I raise 1.1. Oh, no, it's not. k is the power I put on e in order to get 1.001. And I can find this on my calculator. I'm using spaces here because we don't really do commas to the right of the decimal place, but too many zeros in a row gets a little confusing. So 0 0.000995. And this is a four significant digits. This is not rounded to four places. It's four significant digits. And so once we find our k value, we can rewrite 2.1e to the ugly looking k times t. Yeah, exponential growth and decay can be written in exponential form. Let's do some word problems. All right, what good is math if we can't use it? Soon after taking an aspirin, a patient has absorbed 300 milligrams of the drug. If the amount of aspirin in the bloodstream decays exponentially, with half being removed every two hours, find to the nearest 0.1 hours the time it will take for the amount of aspirin in the bloodstream to decrease to 1, 000, uh, excuse me, 100 milligrams. Now I gotta tell you, this sentence starting here, that's a long one, there's a lot going on. So let's go back, let's take a look. Uh, what I notice first, decays exponentially. Decays exponentially, I'm gonna write down my decay formula along with the important information. Decay constant k times half-life equals natural log of two. Continuing, half removed every two hours, that's exactly what a half-life is. It's the amount of time it takes for half the substance to decay or be removed. So the half-life is two hours. I know I initially had 300 milligrams of aspirin. I want to know when it gets to 100 milligrams. So I've extracted all my important information. Let's see what we can do with this. So if we've absorbed 300 milligrams, right, Q sub zero was 300, that's our initial value in the bloodstream. We decay exponentially, Q of T equals Q sub zero E to the negative KT with a half-life of two hours. I can find my half-life, and in this case, I'm gonna use four significant figures, excuse me, I'm gonna round to four decimal places. It happens to be four significant figures as well, but I'm gonna round to four decimal places 
usually this is good enough to get an appropriately rounded answer at the end. You wouldn't want to just take 0.3. That'll make your answer off. But generally, in classroom mathematics, uh, not necessarily in life mathematics, but in classroom mathematics, if you round your decay or growth constant to four decimal places, it'll be accurate enough to round your final answer to the nearest tenth. So we, we use our k times half-life equals natural log of 2 in order to find our decay constant, 0.3466. Now, with q sub 0 equals 300 and k approximately 0.3466, we can solve. There's nothing to solve. We can write the equation. Oh. 300 equals e to the negative 0.3466t. Notice k is not negative. k is a decay constant. k is always a positive value. The negative comes with the setup of the formula because we know it's a decay equation. We know the exponent is negative. But we want to know when it decreases to 100 milligrams. So we want to know when the quantity of aspirin in the bloodstream is 100 milligrams. So we'll solve our equation now. 100 equals 300 e to the negative 0.3466t. Divide both sides by 300. 100 divided by 300. I'm going to call that one third. I'm not going to write the decimal for that though. I'm going to leave it as a fraction. Even if you leave it as 100 over 300, it doesn't matter. But I'm not going to put too many decimals in here if I don't have to. One third equals e to the negative 0.3466t. We've isolated the exponential part. Let's rewrite in logarithmic form. Negative 0.3466t is the natural log of one third. To get t by itself, we divide appropriately. And 3.17 rounds to 3.2 hours. So if we take some aspirin and 300 milligrams are absorbed into the bloodstream, it turns out that it'll take about 3.2 hours before there's only 100 milligrams of aspirin left in the bloodstream. Uh, I try to use real values here. This is a fairly accurate approximation of bloodstream, but it all depends on uh, your body and metabolism and various things like that. So why would a person need aspirin? Well, another example, after a large number of drinks, a person has a blood alcohol content of 200 milligrams per deciliter. 200 milligrams per deciliter is like blowing a 0 0.20 on the uh, breathalyzer. This is bad, people. This is not when you should be driving. If the amount of alcohol in the blood uh, decays exponentially, with one-fourth being removed every hour, find the time it will take for the person's blood alcohol content to decrease to 80 milligrams per deciliter. 80 is blowing a 0 .08 on a breathalyzer. You are, at that time, still legally uh, intoxicated and you can be arrested. Uh, anything below that, you're still taking a chance. Don't do it. Uh, off my soapbox. No more public service announcements. Here we go. One-fourth is being removed every hour. This is not half-life. Don't just assume your half-life is one-fourth. That's not true. How do we handle this? Well, it decays exponentially, so we know our exponential function. We know we originally have a blood alcohol content of 200 milligrams per deciliter, so Q sub zero is 200. A quarter is removed, so it's not a half-life, but it gives us some good information. A quarter of the original 200 is 50 milligrams per deciliter that are removed in the first hour, right? A quarter is removed in the first hour. So 50 milligrams removed in the first hour, which tells us 150 milligrams per deciliter remains after the first hour. And that gives us a point. After one hour, my blood alcohol content would be 150 milligrams per deciliter. And we could use this point in order to find k. If we're not given a half-life, we can use a point to find k instead. Same setup, same problem. So if 150 milligrams per deciliter is what remains when we started with 200, e to the negative k after one hour, all right, I'm going to divide both sides by 200, 150 over 200, I'm not even going to bother calling that 3 fourths. I'm not going to call it 0.75. I'm going to be lazy because I know I'm going to be using my calculator. My calculator's cool with 150 over 200. I don't want to do too much and forget what I am doing as I go along. So I just divide, whatever, leave it. 150 over 200 equals e to the negative k. I multiply by 1. Now that I've isolated my exponential part, I rewrite it in logarithmic form. 
negative k is the natural log, right, the power to which I raise e, in order to get 150 over 200. And negative k is negative 0.2877. Negative k. So I already have the negative in here. We can use this, as our, uh, this in our model as negative k to find the time when the quantity is 80. So let's finish this one up. All right, so I want my blood alcohol content to decrease to 80 milligrams per deciliter, but it's starting out at 200. Of course, I would never do this. Uh, e to the, and I just found k, so this is negative 0.2877t. Divide both sides by 200. 80 over 200, for, you don't have to simplify it. I did, I wrote it as two fifths. Uh, old mathematics dies hard. Equals e to the negative 0.2877t. I've isolated my exponential part. Rewrite it in log form. Divide both sides by the negative 0.2877. I'm going to find natural log in parentheses of two fifths or 80 over 200 if you prefer. Divided by negative 0.2877 and we get approximately 3.18. Uh, a quick note on graphing calculators, make sure you use the negative button and not subtract. Subtract is different than negative. Make sure you use the appropriate key. Uh, remember, we're estimating to the nearest tenth, so when I get 3.18, about 3.2 hours for my 200 milligrams per deciliter of blood alcohol content to get down to 80 milligrams per deciliter. Three hours. Of course, it depends on metabolism and various things, but uh, that's about the same amount of time that aspirin's taking effect. I don't know. Uh, okay, back on my soapbox. 80 milligrams per deciliter, still the amount you could be arrested for under drunk driving laws. Unless you're under the age of 21, uh, or legal age to drink, and then it's a lot less and you can be arrested. That's it. Logarithmic functions in real life. Thanks for listening.